man what's going on we still in the middle of this crazy stuff about to head to the store to buy some things it's late i either go real early in the morning or i go late at night to try to you know catch everything when there's the least amount of people over there so it's getting late right now it's almost getting close, close going towards nine o'clock when the stores usually close around here so gotta get some water and a few other things since i'm gonna be there anyway because i gotta get I ain't got no damn water but let's talk about Dante Wilder a little bit, man. Um, you know, Bob Arum has been talking about the situation. Also has, um, uh, who else has been talking about that? Uh, Bob Arum and just as far as, you know, the fight happening. Um, right now, it's supposed to be, it's pushed back until October for right now. Um, but they're talking about it. it might end up even being pushed back until 2021. Um, now, with it being pushed back until October, I think it's it's a positive thing for Dante Wilder um, because he number one, that was a crazy headshot that he took, you know, with the equilibrium being knocked off, and then taking uh, lots of shots after that for you know for a lot of rounds after that, shot after shot after shot after shot after shot. That's gonna do something to you. So, for him having this time off, that's a good thing because it gives him time to recover. Um, that was one of the reasons why I didn't think Anthony Joshua should have taken that second fight against Tyson against um, Andy Ruiz so soon, um, just due to the fact that like man, you're taking all that damage and you're taking a fight that quick. It's like you really should just take a year off. But you know, um, Andy Ruiz didn't take the fight seriously. The second one didn't train the way he was supposed to. Um, wasn't the same person in that second fight that was in the first. And that's not Anthony Joshua's fault. Shoot, he did what he needed to do, and um, he ended up becoming out victorious, and not having to face. The same level of threat as he did in the first fight. Now for Dante Wilder, um, you know, in this particular situation, we know Tyson Fury is going to be ready for that fight. We know he's going to be focused for that particular fight, and he's still going to have those massive advantages. Um, you know, outweighing Dante Wilder by forty plus pounds, um, the height advantage, reach advantage. Still going to have all of those. You know, quick upper body movement. You know, being able to bounce around like a middleweight. He's, he's still going to have all those advantages um, coming into the next fight. So with you know, the, the damage that Wilder took in that particular fight, it works out great for him. Um, whether it be them fighting at the end of the year um, or even them fighting next year. I mean, it gives him also a lot of time to work on his craft, um, work on the different things that he needs to work on, um, to tighten up that game, changing people. Some people are going overboard saying, that, oh, he needs to, you know, retool the whole car stop from the ground up. I don't know, man. I don't know. If, I guess people haven't been actually watching Dante Wilder fight. I don't know. It's weird to me how people sometimes just act as if this man doesn't know how to do anything. Like, he's just winging it, you know, and just getting lucky every single fight. It's just, it's asinine. I don't, if you don't see the movement that he has, how he's usually able to keep distance, you know, how he's able to set people up and catch them. It's not like they're just falling into the damn punches. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. For whatever reason, you know, people seem to just ignore all that. Where he's able to, you know, shut down inside movement for the most part. And that works for most people. But with him facing somebody that's taller than him, somebody that has a longer reach than him, he's not able to do the same things um, to this per particular fighter that he's been able to do to others. Just like with Klitschko. Klitschko's able to do that whole grab you, lean on you, lay on you. He was able to do all that stuff. But when he faced Tyson Fury, you're facing a much bigger man, a heavier man, a much taller man. So those particular tactics didn't work against somebody like that. So, you know, he needs to make a few adjustments. He got caught and people get lucky. You know, not even lucky, but, you know, you can get caught. Anybody can get caught. You know, it's happened and he got caught. So, you know, the reality is a chance of him getting caught with that particular punch is probably a one in a million again. So, you know, for anybody to think it's going to be the same type of fight, I don't know. You know, I see this, you know, probably possibly should be a completely different type of fight. But, you know, this rest is good for him and this time to work on his game it's also going to be a positive thing for him as well. Even Tyson Fury changed his game plan into the second fight. All this little bouncing and he's been doing for all these, you know, years, he had made that adjustment. He changed, you know, came more flat-footed and started to come forward. And um, it ended up working for him. In the same the same way he's able to make adjustments, Dante Wilde's going to be able to make the same adjustments as well. So all this, this you know, long hiatus, I believe for him is going to be a good thing. Because he's a type of fighter that's going to be in the gym. He's going to be putting in that work. He's going to be focused. And he's not going to be just, you know, eating and getting big or just, you know, laying around and not focusing on the things that he needs to focus on. He's going to be, you know, what's it called? Drunk with 
trying to, you know, be better than he was in the last fight and drunk with, you know, taking that belt back and becoming victorious again. You know, so they were also talking about, you know, oh, maybe, you know, you know, Tyson Fury coming here for a tune up and then fighting. I personally don't think see, uh, don't see that happening. Um, Wilder has a contract. And regardless, if you're, quote, not going to have the gate that you think you're going to have, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden now your contract is null and void. That contract is still there. And that man's not going to necessarily care. You know what I'm saying? He's going to want that fight next. So whenever they're available to make that fight next, I think they're going to make sure that that fight is pushed next. You know, contractually. I don't think he's going to... It wouldn't be a good idea to even, you know, what's it called, let Tyson Fury have that interim bout because you know how Tyson Fury is. You know, if he's fighting lesser competition, he doesn't take it as serious. He's not as focused. He doesn't train as, you know, as, as good as he as he usually does. So he can somebody can get lucky and catch him. You know what I'm saying? And beat him or stop him or whatever. It can happen. So, you know, and not to mention that, you don't know. Is he going to pass, you know, his, his tests that he's going to have to take? You don't know. So there's no point in even taking that risk, you know? You might not necessarily be making the same amount of money as you did previously, but you're still going to be making millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars regardless. So I think Wild Wild is going to want that belt, and I don't think he's going to allow that intermediate, you know, interim bout thing to happen. I think he's going to say, nah, uh, we want the fight, and we want the fight next. And he's going to have that, you know, pushed in, what, in what's going into happening. But, you know, right now we're stuck, <laughs> so we're going to have to see what happens. Because um, me personally, I think... They're going to have a small window. Um, I think this thing's going to kind of dissipate a little bit in about July or so. Um, then you got about August, September. August, September, October, maybe three months. You're going to have maybe three months before I think this thing's going to come back like a firestorm. You know, if it follows what happened with the French, with the Spanish flu um, back in 1918. If that's, if that's the case, that's going to happen. And that hopefully that doesn't happen. Because if that happens... There's going to be no control in that thing. It's going to get real ugly out here. But we'll see what happens when it comes to all that. Right now, everything is at a standstill. But, um, and you know, we'll see how everything goes. And we all know about Tyson Fury, man. When he has too much time on his hands, we know how he gets down. <laughs> you know, we know how, you know, what he, what he likes to spend his time, you know, the, what's it called? The things he likes to spend his time doing, you know. So this hiatus might not necessarily be um, a positive thing for him. But, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe he's made some kind of different changes. Um, but we'll see. But now, about to head up into the store. Like, subscribe, share. I'm out.